Chapter 40 Tam recalled distantly his very young days, when he had grasped a thistle whilst picking flowers for his mother. Was it his mother? He could not recall who, but it was a creature with deep, dark eyes, murmuring to him, soft as a summer stream. Hold still now. It's nearly done. There. That did it. Opening his eyes, he found himself lying in Redwall Infirmary on a spotless white sheeted bed. Sister Arnold shielded his eyes from the mid-noon sunlight pouring in through the open window. She put aside a length of fine flax and a small thorn needle, reaching for some warm water ointment and dressings. Still dazed, the borderer murmured dozily, Did you get all the prickles out? I didn't cry, did I? Doogie Plum's voice answered him, No, you didn't cry. You're a good wee babe. <laughs> Sister Armel spoke severely to the Highlander, Mr Plum, stop moving his paw and hold it still, or I'll never get this dressing on. Tam came firmly awake now. He tried to sit up, but was pushed back down firmly by the infirmary sister. Craning his neck, he could see the crowd gathered in the passage beyond the open door. Sister Armel, Doogie and Abbot Humble were the only ones allowed inside the room. Slightly bewildered, Tam looked questioningly at Doogie. What happened? Oh, my leg feels stiff. Armel tied off the poor bandage, explaining briefly. Your leg should feel stiff, Mr McBurl. It was cut to the bone by that creature's claws. I've put it in a splint. Your left paw was almost sliced through by Martin's sword. You were holding the blade when that awful beast fell upon you. I've stitched it up and it should heal properly, providing that you keep it still and get lots of rest. Tam wrinkled his nose at Doogie. She's being bossy again, mate. I can always tell when she's in that mood, because she calls me Mr McBell. All I can remember from out there is pissing out. Tell me what really went on. Doogie began playing their old game, speaking to Tam in mock bad temper. I'll tell you what happened, laddie. You ruined my best and only claymore. Oh, I don't know what sort of steel Martin Stunt is made of, but it cut great chunks out of my blade. When I picked it up, my poor claymore fell in two pieces. Oh, another thing, your shield will never go into battle again. Tis battered and hauled and bended on most in two halves. And what possessed you to sharp the edge all around like a blade, da? Tam laid his head back on the pillow. Oh, that was a little tip I got from Martin the Warrior. Doogie Plum threw up his paws in resignation. Oh, that explains everything. He should have been called Martin the Destroyer of Weapons. That's a bonny claymore and a fine buckler completely destroyed, thanks to him. Abbot Humble and Arnwell could not help smiling as they listened to both warriors wryly arguing. You're a terrible beast, Doogie Plum, sitting tied nice and comfy to a stick where I'm left fighting Gulo. By the by, did I win, or did you take a nap and miss it all? Ah, I took a wee dose, but they tell me you cut off old Gulo's head with your shield edge. Personally, I don't believe it. I think he slew himself, cause he was afraid to break loose to teach him a lesson. His head's still in the ditch. You can go and ask him yourself, though I didn't can he'd want to talk to anybody right now. Tam grimaced. Aye, he must be a bad loser, Doogie. I suppose you'll let the other bum in the skeep. The Highlander scratched his tail. Well, <laughs> we were considering it. The rest of the vermin fought hard, but that Captain Fortendom, he's not very fussy on vermin. Him and one will finish them off before we got the chance. <laughs> I'll tell you, Tam, those shrews were no pleased at all. Tam looked mystified. What shrews? Doogie gave him a jaundiced glance. Do you not recall Logalog Togi telling you he's going to fetch help when you're part of company? You've got some explaining to do, laddie. The captain and Womble had no sooner put paid to the last of the vermin. When he comes charging out of the trees, but Togi and ten squirrels go him, armed to the teeth and rolling blood and slaughter. Mind, there was nothing compared to the old Friar Gleesome when he saw that he had 200 more mouths to feed for a few days. So that's my bad news. Now have you got any good news for me? Tam winced as Doogie patted his injured paw absently. <sighs> aye. Good news, aye. Did you hear I got my claymore back? Under Altham's royal banner too. Skipper found a hole in the stream bank with that thieving vulnerable kidding them. Doogie grinned. So I heard. As a matter of fact, I taught the good sister Amelin to give me your claymore, seeing as how you ruined my claymore with yon steel hard stud you were carrying, and I thought it was only fair. Tam sat up, outraged, but Armel pushed him back down before explaining herself. I was only acting for the best, Mr McBell. Besides, what would you be needing two swords for? Tam spluttered. 
But one of them belongs to Redwall. It's Martin's sword, not mine. The infirmary sister shrugged. Well, it's always there, should you need to defend Redwall against foe beasts. Oh, I sewed the tears in your banner, and I washed and pressed it. I must say it looks a bit more acceptable now. Tam, however, was not listening to Armil. He was raving on at Doogie Plum. <laughs> so, mate, you are. You're worse than that, you for slight poor. Weedle my best claymore off an innocent infirmary, sister. Shame on you. There's no beast more disgusting than a claymore thief. Ugh, <laughs> I'll best hide my dirk and skin do before you take a fancy to them, too. Armel waved her paws sternly. Enough. I've heard enough. Clear this room so my patient can get some rest. Out you go, Mr Plum. And you too, Father Abbott. You're off with you. And the rest of you, hanging about that passage outside, have you got no chores downstairs? Be gone. Every beast. Humble protested. But I want you just sit in here quietly. Tam winked at him. I'd go if I were you, Father. She's one of her bossy moods. See how her chin sticks out. The pretty young squirrel tried not to smile. One more word out of you, Mr McBell, and... Tam scowled fiercely. And you what? She smiled sweetly. And I'll have Fry Gleason make us a nice tray of afternoon tea for two. So what do you think of that, Mr McBurl, huh? Rackety Tam McBurl gave a deep sigh of satisfaction. I think that's a wonderful idea, Sister Arnold. The End If you enjoyed this audiobook, please subscribe to the channel and remember to hit that notifications bell. We publish every single day and every single book is read right to the end. I hope you enjoyed this reading of Rackety Tam McBurl, A New Tale of Red War, and please let us know if you would like to hear any other books. Thank you for listening.